Um, welcome to episode 31. My name is Sharon and I am a busy mom that is so glad that you are here. Today we are going to be talking about how to plan your day in five minutes or less. This has been sort of a mini series the last few episodes about how I plan my month and then how I plan my week and now today we're going to talk about actually planning your day quickly um, so that you can get into it. Before we get too far, I just want to take a second to remind you about um, the 99 cent notebook challenge, which you will see linked in the show notes below. So this is a, um, if you put in your email address, it will be emailed to you. It is a document where you can go through and under 60, under 60 minutes, <laughs> you can set up your notebook. I share with you my process. Um, I share with you notebook pages, exactly how I do it. Um, and how it's worked for me. I swear by this notebook. It has made me go from a reactive mom to a proactive mom, so I cannot say enough about it. So if you're interested, be sure to check that out. It'll also help with this episode. So let's get into it. How to plan your day. So this may sound overwhelming at first. Um, I'm just going to share with you how I plan my day and then think about how you could adapt it to meet your own needs. So every day I set up a notebook page. It generally looks like this. So it's just one page in my notebook. I put the date at the top um, and I include different, um, the same thing every single day. So it's sort of a formula that I follow. I number one through three on the first three lines. And then is where I put my goal statements. So it is the three things that I want to be true during sort of the season of life. I rarely change these. I probably change them like once or twice a year. Um, but for example, right now I have um, my life inspires others is my first goal statement. And I have two others that I'll share more about on the podcast this week. Um, so be sure to check that out if you're interested. But again, I call them goal statements, but really they're like maybe mantras or um, I feel like they're things that I aspire to be. So I have those listed as my first three things because I want to keep those kind of in the front of my vision at all times. The next three things I do are my goal activities. So, okay, here are the three goals that I want to reach. Now, what am I doing to reach those? So my life inspires others. This week, my goal activity might be recording this video um, for you to help inspire you. So that's how I'm actively trying to reach that goal this week. The next thing that I do, I have my goal statements, I have my goal activities, and then I put my top three for the day. So if I were to finish nothing else, if I was only to accomplish these three things, what would I want them to be? So I list those out every single day. Um, for me, the first one is always my workout. I have, I can't have a great day if I don't have a workout in. So that's always my number one is whatever workout I'm going to do. And then two other activities for the day, whether those be meetings or, um, like uh, events with my family or whatever they are, what are the most important things that are going to happen today? And then right below that, I do a bulleted list of five things that I'm grateful for. And I've talked about this in previous videos, but I try to be as specific as possible. So instead of just saying my husband, I'm grateful for my husband, I try to get more specific and say, I am so grateful to have a husband who will pause his workout in the morning to make me a latte just the way I like it. So trying to be really specific, I notice that helps me to look for things more in my environment, to notice them and be more appreciative. Um, so I do five of those um, gratitudes every day, and it's probably my favorite part of my daily planning. Then after that, the very bottom, I just leave a spot for daily tasks. Um, unfortunately, there's never really a day where I only have three tasks to complete. Uh, wouldn't that be nice? But I put my smaller tasks below. So for example, if I need to email my daughter's teacher, that will just go in sort of my to-do list down at the bottom. That one's less prioritized. It's just like, hey, don't forget this needs to happen. And then if for some reason I don't get to it during the day, I can just put an arrow and put it on the next day so that it carries over so that nothing gets lost. Um, that's so important in being proactive is making sure that you're not losing anything in the shuffle and you start to feel confident with your system, which is so important. Um, one final thing that I make sure to include on my planning page is at the very top, I write the numbers one through five. So one, two, three, four, five. And as I complete my daily five habits, which we talked about in a previous episode that I'll link below in the show notes, I cross them out. So for example, one of the daily five is move your body for 30 minutes. So if I do that, I cross off the number one. I do my early wake up, cross off number two. 
I drink my water, cross off number three. That's how I just keep track during the day. Um, that's kind of a more advanced process and it just helps to keep me accountable. So if that overwhelms you, um, you know, none of this is mandatory. This is just how I organize myself and what I found to be helpful. Again, this process sounds overwhelming, but once you get into it and get into the routine, like I'm half asleep at 5 a.m. when I do this and I just like write out my numbers and I write every and I get things going. So figure out what feels right for you. Maybe do this process for a few weeks and then you can slowly start to adapt it to your needs and to your family and your timetable and all of that. So this week on the podcast, as promised, I'm going to be sharing with you how to actually create those goal statements that I talked about at the very beginning of your, um, at the very top of your daily planning page. So if you're interested in learning more about goal statements, um, you can be sure to check out the podcast for that. I will also dive deeper into how to create goal activities that match your goal statements to help those connect because that can be a little trickier to wrap your mind around. I also am excited to kind of walk you through my typical day as an entrepreneur and then like how um, my daily plan sort of feeds into that. So if you're interested, again, you can check that out on the podcast. Next week's episode, episode 32, is going to be all about how to plan your first personal growth solo retreat. I've been doing these for years and they are my absolute favorite. Um, introvert here, <laughs> if you can't tell, um, but I love getting away and having a chance to really kind of plan my next year and how I want to grow. Um, so I'm excited to share that process with you next week. So be sure to tune in for that. Down below in the show notes, you will see a link to subscribe to my mailing list. Each week I send out personal growth for busy moms that can be consumed and implemented in two minutes or less. So if that sounds interesting to you, be sure to toss your email address on there. Um, and you can always follow along in between episodes on Instagram at Sharon Legere Coaching. Um, and then my website is SharonLegereCoaching.com. And that's where you can find more about me and about some of the services that I offer. So all that being said, I hope you had a great 2022 and happy new year. And I will see you in 2023. Have a great day, mama. Bye.